Welcome to 5 Star Weekly. Atlanta United seem to be alternating losses and draws. Did Joseph make an impact in Rob Valentino's second match in charge? And we get into hate week against the Kitties. All that and more coming up. Welcome to the show, 5 Star Fam. I'm AJ. And wherever it is you get your pods, subscribe, share, and leave us a good rating. This segment is sponsored by Thinking Man Tavern a cozy Decatur neighborhood pub. Grab a tasty beverage from a wide variety of selections and a plate of something delicious from the menu. To go, check out Thinking Man Tavern. Out in the elements and in nature, you hear all of these sounds, but I've got a quick one for you guys this week. And of course, we have to get into our Patreon as well. Join us there at patreon.com slash ATLUCDFanTV. There's some awesome tiers, and you can support us from the ground level. But guys, let's get into that Columbus Crew match review. And yeah, you know, like I said on the top of the show, it seems like we're rotating and uh, kind of going back and forth between losses and draws. And unfortunately, this one was the loss column. And yeah, Joseph Martinez did start. We, uh, yeah definitely reveled in that but you know at the end of the day we just uh, did not put the ball in the back of the net it's a 1-0 loss in front of a lot of fans and Kanye West and uh, yeah it definitely was a weird one for sure uh, you had the poofy jacket and the uh, yeah just why was he wearing that on his head it's, it's, it's an odd thing for sure but uh, yeah so in terms of this match, I mean, it's it's a weird one. Uh, you know, we really, I think, create a lot of chances. We do, I think, pretty well up until the final third, and then that's where it kind of all unravels. That's kind of been the story of the season. And, yeah, you also have Columbus Crew, I feel like, uh, in the first half, definitely weren't the better team. But, uh, ultimately, they, uh, you know, they do get the go-ahead goal, and it's one of those, you just have a head-scratcher. Everybody's, um, you know, in terms of marking, you just, you have guys that uh, they know that this set piece uh, and, you know, what they've studied is coming, but unfortunately, they just, uh, you know, don't mark well, and at the end of the day, you know, this is what you get. You. Uh, you don't finish your chances, you get punished, and this is exactly what happens here. And yeah, I mean, Joseph didn't really get to sniff much at goal, so that's yeah, pretty frustrating as well. Uh, yeah, you have you know Marcelino Moreno balling out of his mind the past few games, and it's good to see, especially without Ezekiel Barco, who they. When they play together, it seems to be like they are in the same spots, and it's not, uh, it's kind of counterintuitive, you know what I mean? And so, essentially, in this match, uh, yeah, you know, you have, I think, chance after chance that we basically just flub, do not put away, uh, and then, you know, when we're chasing a goal, essentially, we fall into those patterns where, uh, you know, we're holding a lot of possession, and we have to put it out wide, and either Brooks Lennon or, uh, you know, someone on the left wing will have to put in a cross. And it's not the right type of cross. It's not uh, varied. It's very much, it's like, uh, it's like when we were playing Sporting KC in 2018. It's like when we were playing Seattle Sounders in 2018. It's just bereft of ideas. And uh, another match in which we are held scoreless. So that's... 10 games without a win. Very, very brutal. Uh, definitely our worst stretch in our club history. But, you know, I think there were some encouraging signs in terms of the type of chances that we created. Uh, definitely in these past two matches with Rob Valentino in charge, we definitely looked more free-flowing. We definitely looked uh, at least more dangerous getting into the final third and creating those chances. But, you know, you, uh, you don't win games if you don't put the ball in the back of the net. And unfortunately, that is the case. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, wrap the match review up. We will, uh, of course, have a match on Friday against Orlando City. That is at 8 o'clock. And we will have that match preview later on in this episode. 
But uh, getting into the news, some quick notes. Uh, basically, Thiago Almeida, transfer rumor of the week, uh, according to Cesar Luis Merlo and German Garcia Grova. Uh, that's LA United have tabled an offer. They have put in an offer for the 20-year-old Argentine from Velez Sarsfield. And uh, apparently it's for 100% of his rights. And so, yeah, this would be a very, very talented player who uh, I think, you know, is a little bit more of a number 10 than, say, Barco and Moreno are. Uh, although Moreno has been, you know, absolutely, I think, uh, earning his keep a little bit more uh, these past few games. But uh, Thiago made a, a little bit more of a goal threat. Um, of course, he is also in the Olympics right now with Ezequiel Barco, with the Argentina U23s. And, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if we actually pulled this move off. Uh, he's valued at $22 million. That's quite a hefty fee. That would be, of course, uh, a transfer record for LA United. But, uh, you know, do you guys think this would be a good, a good move for us? I mean, three attacking midfielders possibly... Uh, very similar in some senses, maybe playing in some similar spaces, maybe one of them needs to go, but also, uh, yeah, it would be a U22 signing, so it would still kind of fit within the parameters somehow, and, uh, you know, basically, probably, Alan Franco would be bought down, and, you know, you kind of have to figure out maybe how to construct the roster that way, but, uh, is this the only move that we will make? I mean... I hope not. Uh, we definitely we have some pieces, but you know I think you know we need some attacking midfielders that can put the ball in the back of the net, and wingers or you know central midfielders that can also do that as well. And currently we just do not have that, and you can see why we are struggling on the pitch in that sense. But guys, uh, yeah, I mean real quick one on the uh, the news and. Uh, I mean, okay, one more bit is, uh, yeah, you have Arthur Blank winning the Humanitarian of the Year, and so congrats to him. Uh, I mean, he basically is, uh, you know, what what a legend we have as an owner, and hopefully he makes some decisions that are uh, maybe a little tough, uh, maybe forcing Darren Eels to, uh, you know, maybe kind of let go a uh, certain front office member, but we'll see. But anyway... Uh, that does it for the news, and let's get into uh, the match preview. And so, 8 p.m. at Exploria Stadium this Friday, it will be Orlando City, who are second in the East, who just recently came off a 5-0 loss against NYCFC. And, uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully they don't come very hungry and looking to avenge this loss, but uh, I have a feeling that they are. And uh, especially, though... We're uh, still undefeated at Exploria Stadium as some lightning strikes behind me. But uh, yeah, we're still undefeated there, and so that is a good thing. Hopefully we can keep that, uh, that streak alive, but it will be very, very tough. I mean, uh, yeah, you will have fans in the stadium. You will no doubt uh, have uh, players be abused while they're playing and, uh, you know, verbally abused anyway. And, uh, yeah, hopefully, though, Joseph can father Orlando City again. But, yeah, I mean, they're a team that, not you know, the 5-0 loss nonwithstanding, they have been on a tear this season. And, uh, yeah, they're something to behold for sure and something to contend with. And we will have our hands full no matter who is playing because Oscar Pereja, their manager, essentially, has them playing in the best form of their entire club history. And meanwhile, we're in our worst, you know, stretch ever. And uh, it's a really pretty bad time, I think, to see Orlando City at this moment. But, uh, you know, that's how it shakes out sometimes. And we're going to have to show up. I think, uh, yeah, if we can create as many chances as we have this past match, then we can probably at least get a result of some sort uh, but you know I think uh, it's gonna be something where uh, Nani is gonna be a handful uh, if DK can play it will be very very tough um, and you know you have the news of Chris Miller 
who, uh, yeah, is maybe linked with Scottish side Hibernian, and, you know, at the end of the season, maybe his head's turned. Maybe he will be a little distracted. Hopefully that is the case. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, I, I fear for this game, for sure. But let's get into the predicted starting 11. And I think, yes, it's going to be Can between the sticks. We have a little bit of a rest, so I think it's going to be, uh, you know, a pretty similar 11. And uh, I think against Columbus Crew, we looked pretty damn good at some stretches. So uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't really stray too far from it. But, uh, yeah. So Lennon, I would think, of course, at right back. Uh, Alan Franco and Anton Walks as a center back pairing. I think Ronaldo Hernandez continues at left back. And then into midfield, Sosa as that holding midfielder. Uh, maybe Sadich kind of rotating between he and Hosetu. And then, of course, Marcelino Moreno, who is pretty much undroppable at this point uh, with the way he's playing. He's pretty much controlling the game and bossing it for us. Uh, I think on right wing, it's Jake Mulraney. If he's healthy, he took a little bit of a knock on his foot. If not, maybe Eric Lopez uh, will come in. On the left, uh, you know, it could go certain ways. Uh, you know, Machop Chol definitely, uh, you know, has been playing there on the left. And, I mean, it's a, a little bit, he's growing into, uh, you know, the team a little bit, but I think, uh, you know, he has played in Orlando. Uh, I, I see him continuing at left wing. And of course, up top, it's got to be Joseph Martinez. And hopefully he can score some. He, maybe he can get some of the right service. Maybe some low crosses. Maybe some to the near post. You know, maybe where it's not always aimed at his head. Where he has to battle big hulking center backs in the box. So hopefully that's not the case. But uh, yeah, leave us your starting 11 in the comments below. But uh, getting into the predicted scoreline, I think, I think somehow there are, there are two goals for each team. It's going to be a 2-2 draw. I feel like it's always form goes out the window in these derbies or these rivalries. So I think we can, uh, you know, either some a penalty or maybe a set piece, which We've won a pretty large amount of set pieces this season. We, I think, I believe, are leading the league in uh, fouls won. So we need to take advantage of this for sure. But guys, yeah, that's the match preview and pretty much the entire episode except for the question of the day. And the question of the day is, would you like Tiago Almeida on the squad? Do you think he would be a fit? Let us know in the comments below. But guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around for a really, really quick one. Uh, but remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. I've been AJ. Thank you so much for watching.